Hey, how are you going? Welcome to the channel. My name's Pete. Uh, this video is about um, trying to pull the transmission out of the uh, the backhoe, the Case 580 SK, um, and pulling it apart to try and get rid of all the debris that's been left through it, all the metal that's been got that has gone through it from the failed torque converter. Um, yeah, so a bit of messing about getting it all all sorted. Um, but yeah, turned out fairly well in the end. Um, it has been noticed in the comments. Somebody, uh, well, you know, my safety footwear, my choice of safety footwear. Um, I'll add a photo of uh, a solution that I think should uh, should fix the uh, the problem. Anyway, please enjoy the video. Thanks. I've decided that I'm going to pull that transmission out completely um, to open up the housings. Um, I just think I can get into it a bit easier and if I find some issues, well, it's already out. It'll be so much easier to fix. Um, however, my wonderful stands that I've made here, uh, yeah, I don't trust them. So I'm gonna see if I can do something to improve that. Uh, so, <laughs> To pull this transmission out, I'm going to need my other backhoe, and if I come back here a bit, between the house and this one, that's not going to fit, um, and I can't move it because some idiot took a wheel off. So the plan is, uh, I need to lift these loader arms up uh, and lock them in position, which then brings us back to the next step. To do that, I've got to take this off and straighten it out. To do that, I first need to lift this up and hold it in position. It's uh, just a big heap of circles I've got to work in. So the plan is, yeah, get that back out, out, lift this up. Um, I've got to lift this up so I can get this pin out. Um, I can't get my circlet pliers in behind it, so I've got to lift this arm up over the bonnet. Then I can knock that out, straighten that up, put it all back together use my safety bar there to lock it, lock the loader frame up high. And with that in position, then there should be enough room I can sneak the other backhoe through the corner here. And then I can clean a few things up in the yard, make a bit of space for myself, and get a bit better access. But before I do all that, I need to make these safety, uh, need to make the stands a bit safer. Still not the most secure thing on the planet, but certainly a lot better than what it was. So this is the part where I try and lift the uh, the bucket up with this machine. Um, I've got to have the camera going for this. This is bound to end in tears. For whatever reason, the pin wouldn't knock through that way, but it's coming out this way with remarkably. Oh, there we go, there's a shoulder on it. Answers that question. All right. Shoulder right there. That's why she wouldn't knock through. With a great deal of medieval wielding of a hammer, I seem to have got that reasonably straight. Certainly a heck of a lot better than it was, and I think definitely usable. Um, the whole boom has sagged down a bit since, uh, since I started this. Uh, so we'll lift that up again. We'll put this all back together. I might strap that bucket back so that it can't roll forward. And we'll lift it up and lock it up in position.
there we go. Safe as can be, sort of. Don't mean to doubt myself, but I honestly thought I'd knock it off those stands. But there we go. To be honest, I don't I didn't see it move too much unless you guys did. We have our safety support back in position. I'll replace that screwdriver with a bolt just to make sure she's right. Change that one back. But it's kind of falling back now anyway, there's no way that can go forward. That old bucket. And the theory is there may be enough space for me to drive through there with the other machine now so that I can get into the side of it and lift the transmission out. That's what this whole day's work was about. Well that was disappointing. I just did this great monologue of uh, what I've been up to. Went to turn the record button off, realised I hadn't even turned it on. So let's have another go. <laughs> All right, so this is now the following weekend. Um, what you saw a second ago was last weekend. Um, what I've done, um, I've got the got that uh, support arm fixed and the bucket locked up in position, which allowed me room to get the other backhoe out and into position over here, ready to go underneath and lift out this transmission. Um, I've also cleared some space on the back patio. Uh, normally, my wife would get very upset about me pulling things apart on the back patio. But seeing as how she doesn't exist, we're good to go. Um, what else have I done? Uh, had a look in the workshop manual. Um, these things come out remarkably easy. So there's a few little things inside. There's the, uh, the, the diff lock to disconnect. There's the shuttle control to disconnect. A couple of wires, your brake lines, gear levers, which is just two pins. I've yet to undo the handbrake. And that's almost it. A couple of hydraulic hoses. And then these uh, mounting bolts. Um, yeah, then you can just drop it out and uh, away you go. Anyway, let's crack on with the day. I've got most things undone. <coughs> there's, oh, you can just see there, there's a hydraulic line that I just cannot reach. And also there, oh, I think I've undone the brake line on the back, but there's a hydraulic pipe there. I've cracked it loose but I can't actually get enough turn on the spanner to undo it. Um, and the brake line over that side, I don't know if you can see it through there. Um, it's in there, trust me. Um, but again, I can't get in there to undo it. So the plan is going to undo the mounting bolts. These crazy kids, I've already cracked them, they're, they're loose. Um, going to put the uh, tobacco forks underneath it to support it and then I can undo those and lower it down four or six inches and hopefully that will give me some room that I can undo the rest of those things and then it should just pop out easy peasy I'll come in as far as I can I had to pull the uh, the guard or whatever you want to call it back plate off the forks so I could get it in far enough that's just touching on a stud there and we're only just reaching to the other side um, all right, let's undo these, these bad boys and lower it down a little bit. I want to film this so we can document everything going pear-shaped. So I've loosened the uh, mounting bolts. Um, they are loose. Oh, sorry, get that in focus. They are loose, <coughs> and it is supported by the uh, the forklift. And hopefully, that's come down about an inch. I'm hoping that might be enough for me to get access in there. I only just miss, so it might be all right. Let's give it a go. Undone. 
So we're down on the ground, which went well, except I don't think it's going to clear the back there. That dipstick tube is a little bit tall. Even if I pull the, uh, the dipstick out, I still think it's going to hit. So do I unbolt that whole panel off the back or do I raise the machine up? So the fun never ends here at Project 580. Um, before I get stuck into pulling this apart, um, the idea of pulling it apart is I need to clean it all up. So I'd rather clean the outside so I'm not introducing anything new into the system as I go. So that's fine, I can pick it up and move it over here. Use my trusty water blaster. Um, <laughs> but now I have another job. So, in the off position it trips out the circuit breaker. When you turn it on, it runs fine. Go figure. My guess is the switch there is full of water or something. So I'm just going to pop the end off that and see what's inside. So, that water trickling out. I don't think it's meant to do that. To continue the theme of the never ending fun, this screw is. Uh, this little brass insert molded into the plastic and it's the brass insert is spinning the screws not undoing Okay, I'm going to blow that out and just let it dry while I have some lunch. Bloody lovely. So I've got it reasonably well sealed off. Um, next step is to uh, Hit it with a gurney, a little pressure washer, aqua blaster, whatever you want to call it. This guy. That looks a bit better. Might just get the air gun and give it a quick blow off before I put it back in the shed. And Rattle a couple of covers off. Probably take the back cover off first. That looks to be the easiest. This has been off before and a while ago, but look at it. If they've put it on properly, which it looks like they have, this is not going to come off easy. Um, my screwdrivers are designed to be hit, though I don't like to overdo it. There we go.
It did come off easy. Relatively. Okay. I don't know what that's off. Something broken. As much as it's a lovely sunshiny day, I've still set up a light. Um, and this is the reason why we pulled this apart. All this sludge that's on here, I need to clean all of that out. And just make sure there's nothing odd or about to uh, blow up whilst we're going. Bloody handbrake. Oh, oh. Mm. Okay. So, probably need a new handbrake. Um, that's okay. There's material on there, although it doesn't look brilliant. That's completely gone. That's pretty average. Um, <laughs> gone, gone. Yeah, wow. It is moving, but not with any speed. And I think it's going to be quite heavy. Yay! Oh, I was right, that is heavy. Oh, oh. Jesus. So the bearing actually looks reasonably good. That one at least. And that one. And that one, okay. That's good. This is the shuttle control. I will pull this out next and make sure it's all honky dory. Uh, clutch packs aren't worn out or anything silly like that. So I had a look in the workshop manual and you've got to pull the, that's actually the pinion gear. The other end of this is the pinion onto the diff. Uh, and you've got to pull all of this apart to get the shuttle control out this is the piece <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this is the piece i want to get apart today and check its condition so there are two clutch packs for your forward and reverse um yeah and there's like wear pads same as the uh or similar to the handbrake i want to get them apart and see what condition they're in i'm hoping this doesn't damage the bearing um, not the end of the world if it does, but be a lot happier if we can get this apart without 
destroying things. It's getting near the end of the day and I'm a little bit pooped. Oh, it's coming easy. I was hoping to ask the other fella to do this, but he's a little bit like my wife. Oh. Yes, he's a oh. he's a little bit like my wife in that he doesn't exist. So that kind of puts it back onto me. No damage to the bearing, that's good. Everyone's kicked a goal. So I have to get that bearing off so we can access that circlet. It sits under that bearing. The inside hub. Some marks on there. No, I think they're machine marks. These guys here. Normally if you see wear, it'll be on that edge there. And that actually looks pretty good. So. There's a clip in here. Which we can flick that out. Then we can get the uh, backing plate out. Have a look at the uh, the clutch discs. Getting exciting. Ah, oh, bloody lovely. Now, of course, I'm going to need to check in the book and take measurements. But they look perfect. Whew. Bloody happy with that. All right. I've taken the, uh, the trumpet housing off uh, simply for the purpose of checking the brakes. Um, and they look perfect. So happy with that. Put this back together and we'll keep going. Again, there will be something in the book which uh, gives me a go or no-go measurement for uh, the disc thickness. I will check that, but uh, just off the top of my head, that looks perfect. I know I keep harboring on about it, but one of the reasons we're pulling this all down is to catch this metal debris that seems to be through everything. So, I wasn't uh, looking at how good this brake was, I kind of debated leaving the other side alone. But yeah, now that I've seen that, I mean, that's why we're doing this job. Um, the other thing while we're going, um, because of this gear, it won't fit in my press. Um, just so happened to have a puller that I made years ago for pulling wheels off Hino trucks. Back when I worked um, for the Hino, company um, <coughs> part of the service was you had to repack wheel bearings and it just got such a pain in the butt that I made a wheel bearing puller um, to get them apart sort of half the time of the job but anyway it's sort of sat in my toolbox ever since and all of a sudden today it has a use so yay Yay! Ah. Not what I wanted. Rub it in the dirt and then put it back in. That's that go.
There we go. The side also looks good. Plenty of wear on that. Again, I'll take measurements. That butt off the cuff, that looks pretty good. All right, I think I'll end the video there. Um, thank you for watching, do appreciate that. Um, next week, uh, I probably won't do a video on this. Um, I'll still be working on it. Um, it's just that uh, next week, it's just gonna be cleaning stuff, measuring stuff. Um, nothing that interesting to, uh, to film, I would think. Um, I've got another video next week of a, uh, a job I did probably Got to be about six weeks ago, maybe a month or six weeks ago. Um, uh, part of the rotary welding table, uh, in addition to that that device, um, which again in later videos, more videos that are coming up, uh, I do get to use that machine uh, for its designed purpose, uh, and it went fantastically, I must say. But anyway, back to this thing. Um, yeah, so uh, next week we'll. Uh, will be something else um, whilst I'm doing all the boring stuff. Um, so yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. All right, thanks. See ya.